What's up guys, I'm IGP and welcome back to another IGP log. Now first I want to say I'm very sorry for not uploading for like five fucking days. That's like unheard of on my channel, completely. But as a lot of you already know, my life is hectic. I think I'm going to go back to doing about one to two videos a day. I know I talked about doing three and I think I did that for like two days out of the last however long it's been since I've done the last log. Also, I'm kind of excited about this room particularly and the reason why I'm excited is because I think I finally have it all figured out except for the light and the webcam you see that right there I know how distracting that is and this right here too this just giant shine because the lights right there above the webcam you can see how bright it is too I'll figure that out I'm looking into stuff but aside from that this entire room is covered in acoustic foam this this is where the door is but we have a layer of acoustic foam and then these blankets, these blankets were meant to keep, like, to have a neat background. That's the whole purpose of it. But it also acts as a cushion because these are moving blankets. This is like double layered moving blankets. So literally, there is no way that you can hear any echo in any direction at all. And it sounds amazing because it's literally pure voice and other extra sounds. Also, one of my favorite things about this room is actually what's beneath my feet. You know what it is? Cool air. Finally, I have this entire place air conditioned and it's not in the way that you would think. I don't have a fan underneath me. Instead, when I originally put my stuff in here, there was this big old pipe coming from the floor and then out through the wall and that's where all the, the conditioned air flows through and then goes into the room to cool it down. It was actually pretty easy to take apart. I was able to remove the pipe, so basically coming from underneath the floor is air. It's just coming straight out of the floor and filling up this room, which makes it much cooler, which is fantastic because that was one of the biggest downfalls about being in a small space like this is that it's always super hot. So now it's not. I just rhymed. I also want to thank you guys so much for helping the channel to get to 125,000 subscribers. Guys, that's too much. Too much. And I know a lot of you are still waiting for the 100,000 subscriber special live stream. I have to coordinate that with a few people. So anyway, back to the original point of the video. Now, in the last IGP log, I wrote off some of your answers to the previous question. I told you we're going to continue doing that as a trend for this series. So we're going to do that. Last episode, I asked you guys to just ask me questions. We're doing a Q&A of sorts. So I'm going to read through the comments as they appear to me. They're in no particular order, just the way YouTube decides to sort them for me. And uh, let's go ahead and have some fun. Crystal Walker asks, your eyebrows look like normal eyebrows with a second eyebrows stuck to the end of them. Why? Now that's a very good question and I'm glad you've asked me. See, I'm in the business of holding other people's eyebrows. I actually have a business page if you guys want to check it out. It's called I'll hold your eyebrows.com and if you pay $29.99, I will hold on to your eyebrows so you don't have to have the burden of carrying them and I'll do it for however long you want. It's $29.99 per day. I do have some weekly special deals. You guys can check that out in the description below. Weasel Zone asks, favorite sexual position with me? Now that of course is the weasel. Jas Kran asks, the story behind your piercing? Now I'm assuming you're talking about this one because it's the most obvious one. The camera's usually over there so you don't really get the see this one but there really isn't any story behind uh, my piercings it wasn't like a drunk night it wasn't because I was a rebel I just I just really appreciated the look and I wanted it for myself that's that's pretty much the best I can give you P Andre asks at what age do you approximate you're going to quit YouTube because old bored any reasons to be honest I'm probably never gonna quit doing YouTube as long as YouTube allows me to do it the rad kid gaming asks why did you start YouTube now for me the answer is pretty simple um I had fallen I had developed a new relationship with independently developed video games I really liked them they were completely different from the mainstream games they they had depth they had a uh, they had essence to them and I did at the time watch a lot of let's players like Markiplier and PewDiePie and I saw the games they were playing and I appreciated them like they played Amnesia and I was like man Amnesia was a great game it was a really well developed game and I was like man who else is developing awesome games that I haven't heard of before and as I started searching through their channels especially back then there wasn't much of like unheard of games you know what I mean like for instance the game the letter V six times by Terry Kavanaugh it's an amazing game, it really is. It's one of my favorite games. I never saw anybody play it. Like all of the little guys, the very little guys who make tiny projects or like who pump out games all the time, who are very talented, 
don't get that much attention. And that was the original point for my channel was to start doing that, was to promote the little little guys of indie. Because there are people who are playing the major indie games like Minecraft, Amnesia, Battle Block Theater. Those games that everyone knows, but the little guys are being left out. And that was the point. And I know I strayed a little bit from that, in a sense, because I am playing games currently that everyone knows about or that are very popular. But at the same time, with YouTube, you have to still grow in order to have a larger base of an audience in order to help promote the little guys to begin with. So it's 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 an ongoing cycle of, of both. I totally strayed from the question, but yeah, that's why I started YouTube. Ethan Rucker asks, IGP, are you actually gay? If so, do you like to receive it? Do it. Now, I actually get that question a lot. Are you gay? And it's probably because I always make sexual jokes with Weasel. And in Shelter, the series, I made him my spouse, which I've already explained that anyway, but people don't listen. Am I gay? Does it matter? Batter asks, do you have pets? If you don't, what do you wish you want or like? Fuckers grab <laughs> So do I have pets? Yes, I do. Uh, a lot of you would remember Pixel, the cat. Now, she's currently not here to show, um, but I've had her for quite a long time now, like two, two and a half years, maybe, Pixel. Which is funny because everyone was teasing me or making fun of me or saying that I was copying Dragast because he got a cat recently after I did and called it Pixel, little, he didn't know about mine, clearly. But then everyone was like, oh, you named your cat Pixel? You're just copying Dre, guys. You're trying to get pop. I've had Pixel forever now, okay? Anyway, again, I trailed off. Yes, I have a cat and she's amazing. She's she's lazy. She's lazy as fuck, as, as most cats are, but she's awesome. Caleb Highness asks, what's your top five to 10 video games? I'll do five. In no particular order, Amnesia, The Dark Descent, Silent Hill 2, Final Fantasy X, The Letter V Six Times, and Subnautica. Cardi asks, are you single? Catface. No, I'm not single. Uh, I, I have a wonderful girlfriend. I'm, I'm very happily taken. Winged Curibo 39 asks, are you ever going to do some kind of comedy skit with Weasel Zone? I think it would be pretty good. But yes, I have considered doing comedy skits. We actually talked about him because he had collected a whole bunch of uh, uh, monthly... Uh, boxes that he wanted to open and show the merchandise from and we were thinking we were throwing around ideas for a comedy skit to do with it We just never got around to do it. Nul R asks who the hell is Suzy Q? That's right. I forgot to mention it quite a while ago Suzy Q has been found. Harry Robinson had said is Suzy Q from Prison Break as Teabag's girlfriend and yes Teabag was an inmate in the prison who was just a ruthless murderer He was a southerner and he had this this strange accent in the way he talked um, that really stuck in my head and the thing that stuck in my head the most out of what he said was Susie Q because he that was his girlfriend It was like Su Susan, I think was her name But yeah, he kept calling her Susie Q and it just stuck in my head and that's pretty much where it came from just That's it. Ryan Batter asks, what's your favorite TV show? Mine's The Walking Dead. Mine is Breaking Bad Flora Smith asks, name five of your favorite hardcore bands Now I'm gonna assume you mean metal or metalcore Unearth, August Burns Red, The Contortionist, Veil of Maya, Texas in July Melvin Abru asks, what is your real name? My real name is Adrian. That one guy at school asks, how old are you? I'm 25. I see we're getting a lot of uh, basic questions here, which is what I actually imagined to get. A lot of you guys have come up with really creative questions, and I appreciate that. But yes, I'm 25 years old. Rewilization asks, are you a dad? Yes, I am. I have two lovely, beautiful daughters. Mike Muffin Man Gaming Gibbs asks, would you rather fall in lava or down in boiling water? Uh, lava, because I'd probably die much quicker. The Window Slayer asks, IGP, if you could play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be? Good God. Uh, it would have to be something that you guys probably wouldn't even expect. I know a lot of you are expecting me to say, like, Subnautica and such, but it would get boring after a while. Almost any game would get boring after a while. I wouldn't want to only play one game for the rest of my life. I mean, ideally, if I have access to mods and such, it would be something like Minecraft, because you can do pretty much anything in that game at this point. There's so much to do. You can create stuff. It doesn't get stagnant. There's even a story mode. Ugh. Still, you have access to do whatever you want, so I guess it'd be Minecraft. God, I just sold out, didn't I? Catu Valos de Alessio. Question, why won't you accept my Steam friend requests? Uh, that's because my Steam, my own Steam, is meant for... Uh, my close friends and family. Salad Gamey asks, what would you say is your favorite horror game? Now, my favorite horror game, I have two, I'd say. I actually, I have, I have a bunch, but I'm just gonna name, th I'll name three. <laughs> I'll name three for the sake of this, this comment. The first one is Silent Hill 2. 
one of the best horror games ever. Amnesia the Dark Descent. And three, surprisingly, is SCP Containment Breach. Now, this is more from a development standpoint. I love that game because it has so much potential. Because you have people contributing to the SCP Foundation website with stories about strange things happening, there you have literally endless content. It's like a collaborative game being made to scare the shit out of you. Daylight Valentine asks, do you have any tattoos? If so, maybe we see. No, I don't actually have any tattoos, surprisingly. I have all these piercings, but no, no tattoos. I'm, I'm planning on getting one soon, but it's going to be a big one, and it's going to be expensive, and it's going to be complicated to design, so it'll probably be some time before that happens. Shirogs asks, I'm sorry if I can't. Question, how often people recognize you as IGP and come up to you and say, hey, are you IGP, and I love your videos? How does it feel to have fans come to you? Thanks for the videos, amazing effort, and good job. Thank you very much. It's not surprising. I would say it's surprising probably to some of you, but it is not surprising to me that people don't actually come up and recognize me at all. I have had one person recognize me and I was at like 2,000 subscribers maybe. I was in a taxi cab and the taxi driver, well we were, to we were talking about indie games and he was talking about how he was developing one and uh, I, I told him I did YouTube coverage on it and then he st I could tell in his face he was starting to be like, oh, who, which one do you do? And then I, I told him and he's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the, like, the only time that anyone has ever recognized me per se. Um, and I think one of the things that's gonna make it hard for people to recognize me is the fact that I don't show my face all the time I'm doing vlogs more often and I'll be doing face cam stuff But you got people like PewDiePie, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye the guy who have very unique looks and not to say that I don't you look unique I do look like me, but they show their face in almost every single one of their videos and So when you when you watch their videos, that's when you come to know some people only watch my subnautica videos And I've only showed my face once in subnautica I have over a hundred episodes and a lot of you guys come from subnautica So a lot of you only really know my voice not my face So if any of you were to run into me, you probably wouldn't even recognize it's me unless you've watched my vlog So it, it, it it's I haven't had that happen yet. Then again I haven't also gone to a convention yet, which I plan on doing soon um, Which means people can potentially recognize me which would be a very surreal very surreal thing and I'll probably lose my mind and cry and curl up in a ball the leprechaun asks is this your dream job being a youtuber I'd say it wasn't it's not necessarily my dream job a dream job to me is something that I have always wanted to do since I was a kid I'd say no it's not it's not my dream job uh, it is something that I love doing and I wouldn't give up for the world and at this point in time if I was able to restart like my idea of a dream job, I would say it is. This is whoever says that this isn't fun is lying to you, okay? It does come with its ups and downs. Like between what I do for another YouTuber and what I do on my own channel, I spend about six to eight hours a day doing recording, video editing, thumbnails, metadata, and stuff for two different channels, two big channels, I guess. And that's seven days a week. So it's it's a little bit taxing. And then you know, you got comments and stuff to read through and emails and 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 preparing and stuff like that. It's not as it's not as simple as everyone says it is, but it is an amazing job. I get to interact with you guys. I have this amazing community. I get to play all these fantastic games and I get to tell you how I think about it. Like I just get to, to be myself. It's an amazing job, okay? But it wasn't my original dream job. My dream job was to be a musician, as most of you can probably tell. I do play guitar. Uh, some of you have seen my previous vlogs where um, I showed you some of my work and such and I was in a band at one point. Yeah, I wanted to do that That's originally what I wanted to do. I remember watching um, Parkway drives documentary if any of you guys know that the very first one and saw how they live they traveled they toured the world um, You know, they they slept outside because they had to they just it was just a life that I wanted um, a long time ago again, that was my original dream job, but but yeah, I'd say at this point Starting again with a fresh start in life. I'd say that doing this would be my dream job. Yes Anthony Batten asks I think in an older video you said something about having another job besides making YouTube vids if so What is it now? This might have been a long time ago when I first started um, but now yes My life is exclusively YouTube aside from my own channel. I do video editing thumbnails metadata and such for cinnamon toast Ken uh, if you guys know him uh, and that is my that's what I do when I'm not doing my own YouTube stuff I'm doing other YouTube stuff. So my YouTube is my life at this point Tetrify says cinnamon toast Ken mentioned you in one of his videos Do you ever think you will do a video together? It's super cool that you guys are friends jelly cuz CTK is daddy. <laughs> yeah, I say um, I would love to be able to do that I don't know if you know, that's 
it's very strange to be able to do that because you got to remember when when a YouTuber as, as large as Cinematos Ken is collaborates with a very small YouTuber, relatively small YouTuber, um, it, it creates this idea that anyone can do it or that you have to do it for other people if you're going to do it for him. Like him playing with with PewDiePie, Markiplier, and Jacksepticeye makes sense because they're like the biggest gamers out there. But then playing with me kind of would be weird. I would love to play with them. Don't get me wrong. I would love to do that. Um, if that time ever comes around, I'm sure you guys will know about it. Gabriel Archer asks, what do you like to eat? Everything. Icy Caress asks a lot, actually. Where did you meet all of your YouTube friends, i.e. Weasel, Lauren, Jess, and the rest of the lovely fellas you collab with? Uh, this- he knows the answers to this one, he just wants me to explain it to people who may not know. Now, I met Weasel back in 2013. Uh, at the time, I think I was like 80-something subscribers. He was at 67, he made a vlog saying that uh, he wanted to know ideas for doing a 100 subscriber special and I had commented say hey you should do a collaboration originally it wasn't intent of me doing it with him I know where your mind went uh, but it was just an idea like hey maybe you should collaborate expand and that will help your channel grow too uh, and so he messaged me almost immediately after and said hey did you mean you I assume you did do you want to try to do it and we did and we played a, a amnesia custom story together uh, it wasn't like actual co-op, it was like, we started at the same time and, and played it, and it was really, it was really fun. Shortly after that, we met Lauren, um, I think I ran into Lauren just trying to find other channels to, to talk to and collab with, and, um, I had subscribed to her, and she subscribed back, and we, when we started talking, she had watched, I think, a Bloody Trapland video that uh, Weasel and I did, and said she wants to join, so then that happened, and then almost the exact same thing happened with Jess, very short time after that Jess came around and she was uh, relatively small as well and uh, it was just like the perfect group to start and we, we chatted and we're still all close friends in fact we've all hung out numerous times uh, because Weasel came from Germany to the States I'm rambling but that's essentially how it started and just to be fair I see caress I'm only gonna answer that first question love you bro Aaron Kennedy asks on a scale from 1 to 10 how annoying is it when people ask you to stop swearing that has to be a 10 and I'm not going to be exaggerating because I'm really going to say this as serious as I can. I have had videos where I was very foul pretty much throughout the entire video. And I have those days sometimes. And that's fine with me. There's no way I'm ever going to censor myself. So don't worry, guys. Well, then, and then the people who actually give a shit that I cuss, I'm sorry. Don't watch the videos because that's part of my language, okay? If you're a grown-ass man or a grown-ass woman and you're letting your three-year-old kid watch my videos and you're upset at me for cussing you should probably watch someone else do you understand how many youtubers there are on this on this planet right now there are so many other fucking gamers that you can watch and i'm intentionally cussing right now because i am a little agitated but there are so many other fucking youtubers that you can be watching you do not have to let your innocent three-year-old child watch my videos see i'm about to go on a rant and i'm gonna go in there a little bit and then and then pull back don't take your values from YouTubers or television shows. If you're going to let your kids watch someone who cusses, because I do know that PewDiePie has a rather young fan base. There are a lot of people who grew up with PewDiePie who are no longer young, but that whole new wave, that whole new generation is adoring PewDiePie, and he cusses all the time. The difference is, I imagine, that you let your kids know that what that person is saying they shouldn't repeat that doesn't mean that they can't find entertainment in the videos you just got to let them know and make sure they understand that they can't say that see when my kids hear me cuss you know what they say they don't repeat it they say daddy don't say that and I'm like damn you guys are awesome now that totally wasn't like here let me teach you how to parent or anything like that at all but it's like don't don't comments on my videos and say, hey, stop swearing. Do you know kids watch your videos? Yes, of course I know kids. I actually have access to all of my analytics and I can see how young some of my viewers are. So yes, I'm very aware that is not does not mean I'm going to stop cussing. That's part of who I am. In fact, it, I think it's a little absurd that we can't cuss in front of kids that we consider it bad mannered because that's all society. That's not like those aren't forbidden words Unless you're like super religious, then some words are completely forbidden and you will be damned to hell for an eternity if you say them. For me, I don't give a shit. None of the cuss words will ever offend me. 
Okay, but that's the end of my rant. I actually don't even know how that flowed. It probably was pretty shit, but whatever. <laughs> 10, a fucking 10. I hate it. Please stop commenting saying to stop cussing because it's not going to happen. All right, guys, so thank you so much for all of your comments and questions. It's very much appreciated. I hope you got to learn a little bit more about who I am. Uh, if you didn't, I'm sorry. And this is the part of the video where I thank all of my wonderful patrons uh, from Patreon. You guys are lovely people, and I love all of you. And these people are Logs, V-Star, Etienne Martin, Brandon, Yuri, Lord Samuel Newman, Martin Pitt, Panleo1, Zach McGrath, Null14, Andrew Taralba, Robert Smith, Lauren, Amy, Clockwork Rat, Trekkie Monster, Robert Wyndham, Weasel, Leto, Mark, Fonduman, Eden, Roger Mieres, Ron Huckabee, Akatwimbis, and My Motored Heart. You guys are perfect. Thank you so much for all of your support and ongoing support. Seriously. So, for the next video, what I want you guys to do is come up with your best slogan for this channel. Your best catchphrase. Something that I can put in the YouTube banner as my actual slogan. Now, I may or may not do it depending if I find one I like, but definitely consider that um, when creating your own. Leave your suggestions in the comment section below and I will read them off in the very next IGP log. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. I love you all and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.